It's the Packet Froa! Welcome to the channel! So where we are at the moment is we have our e-managed cluster up and running, and now it's time to start adding the other controllers into the mix. So I went ahead and did the password change and set an IP address on the vBonds and the vSmart. And now we're just going to run through the basic configuration so we can get them added into the vManage. So for the vBond, this is very similar to what we saw with the vManage, uh, except for it uses a gigabit interface instead of the ETH0 because this is actually a vEdge appliance that just runs the vBond role. And then the only configuration difference is that under the tunnel interface, we also have encapsulation IPsec for these type of devices. Beyond that, we put our IP address on it. We make sure we are allowing the services and we have our default route. For our system configuration, we can put more into one line there so we can make this a bit quicker. So we're gonna say system, if I can type that as system, host name, and I'm just gonna call this vbond0. Organization name is gonna be test lab. I really can't type right now. Oh, well, we're doing this anyway. And I already set the service provider name, so I have to do that everywhere. Now for the site ID, I'm just going to put this as 255 because this is what I'm going to be using for management. Then the system IP for this is going to be 255.255.21. And I'll do the NTP configuration as well over here. Just like that. Now, the vbond is a little different because this is a vbond. So we type the vbond command and we can give it a DNS name or an IP address. I generally like to give the vbond an IP address because it's local. So I'm just gonna type in the IP address for this. And then we can type local to let it know that it is a vbond. If you did want to do zero touch provisioning, you could also type in ztp-server. But the reason I'm doing this in this video series is because this is for physical appliances and I don't have any physical boxes, I'm doing everything virtually. But essentially all I would do if I wanted to do the functionality is I would do this and then we would just rely on the um, plug and play portal and the Cisco software central to handle this. Anyway, with that in place, we're just going to go ahead and type commit. And we can have a look at what we just did there. And then to save some time, I can just copy this. And for the other vbond, I'm just going to paste this in and make some edits. So this is going to be vbond2, this is going to be 22, this is going to be 95, and everything else is fine to me. The vSmart is just like the vManage. So again, it's the ETH0 interface and there is no encapsulation IPsec. Everything else is the same. So for this, what I can do is just, put, oops, lost on my configuration there. I'm just gonna go back here. And because most of this is the same, I can paste this in. And this is going to be vSmart. I'm just gonna call this 31, same site ID. The vBond is going to be the DNS name. And yes, I did forget the DNS uh, on the main interfaces, so I'll have to add that. And if we're happy with that, we can just copy this and go paste.
Likewise, for this guy, this is VSmart 2, 32. And that's all fine. And, and since I'm in uh, config mode, all I need to do is type VPN0, DNS 10.20.2.10, primary, and I'm in the wrong spot actually, so what I'm just gonna do is type in, this is what happens when you try and save time. VPN0, there we go. Okay, so, so I got that done in three of them, but I didn't do it in this one. You know, sometimes saving time is not worth it. Okay, so that's all done. So now I should be able to go back to my vManage here. And then under devices and controller, we can go add controller, add vBond. Then we type in the IP address for this. And by default, it's going to generate a CSR and send it for signing, so which is fine for me. So I'm just going to go add. Okay, and then we can do the same thing for the other guys here. So vbond, this is going to be it's going to be 95. Then vsmart, this is going to be 96. And 97. So basically now we need to wait for a bit and what we should see is that it should start discovering the host name and the system IP and the site ID and such. And then once all that's done, we're gonna be good to go. So I'm just gonna pause this and we'll have a look back in a few minutes. And while we're waiting, one thing we should do is we should go under certificates and we should push the authorized serial number list to our controllers here. So first of all, we want to send the vEdge devices to it. Then we'll do the same thing for the controllers. So we'll go back to certificates and controllers. And then we can send the controller list to the vBond. So this is how the VBond knows that the controllers are part of your network there. So this is a basic security so that if someone else takes a controller and tries to add it to your network, it's gonna stop it. Though granted, that's probably not the most likely scenario, but we got protection for it. All right, so now I'm just gonna keep waiting. Um, just a friendly reminder that if you forgot to change this value, to something low like one minute there and you left it an hour. It's gonna wait literally an hour before it starts trying to provision. So you wanna keep this as short for a lab, otherwise you might be waiting a while. Okay, so now everything's registered. We can see that it's learned its set ID, which is typically a sign that everything is all happy here. If we check out certificates, we can see that the certificate's installed and everything is happy. By the way, when you're doing a vManage cluster, you may need to manually press the generate CSR button, just FYI. And we can also do some verification. So we can check our dashboard and we can see that our two vSmarts are happy, our two vBonds are happy and our three vManage. If we hop onto the CLI, We can check the status by doing show control local properties. And this is gonna let us know that it's got its CA, it's got a certificate, when it's valid, what the vBond is, the site ID, 
the site ID along with all the other system information. And from here, we should see that the actual connections are up. If you get to add something like say the system IP, what's gonna happen is that it's just never gonna learn all the site ID information there, so you're gonna have to figure out why. You can also see what it's talking to by doing show control connections. And from here, we can see that the vSmart is talking to the other vSmart, it's talking to the vBonds, and it's talking to our vManage. If we're troubleshooting, we can use the dash history add-on, and this is going to show you the various reasons why the connection failed. And how you do this is we have a legend up here. So for example, disk lock means that the T lock is disabled, so that's more of a provisioning thing. On the V bond, we have a slightly different command and it's show orchestrator and then the same command structure. So here we can see what the local properties are. We can see the connections, which is basically everything in the environment connecting to it. We can see connection history, if there's any thing that we need to troubleshoot. And we can also go a step further and see the valid uh, devices there because we push the serials from the V manager. So the V bond is aware of what devices. So for example, if I do valid V edge, we can see our list of serial numbers. So typically if you're adding a brand new V edge device into the network there and it's not working, you want to make sure that the V bond is aware of it. So at this point, I will stop the video here and in the next one we'll start building our templates to configure our controllers.